This video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Atlas currently has a limited time huge Christmas deal offering three years of protection for only $1.70 a month, plus six extra months for totally free. Snatch up this deal before it's gone. Links in the description below. We'll talk more about them later. Uruguay at first seems like any other Latin American country. However, contrary to many others, its history is plagued by conflict between the two Iberian powers, Portugal and Spain. This begs the question, why was the region so important to these two empires? Before understanding this region's importance, a quick run-through of its colonial history is necessary. The first documented arrival to the region was made by the Portuguese expedition of Frois Lisboa, which reached the Rio de la Plata estuary between 1511 and 1512 CE. This might as well have been the beginning of a rivalry between Portugal and Spain in the region, as Spain sent their own expedition to the region in 1515. This Spanish expedition would be led by Juan Díaz de Solis, who, in 1516, was the first European to land in modern-day Uruguay. This would cause the Portuguese navy to start regular patrols in the region, in order to prevent further Spanish advances. This rivalry, however, did not end up in any of the powers permanently settling the region, for now at least. Fast forward a few decades to 1580, and a succession crisis in Portugal led the Portuguese to a personal union under the Spanish-led Iberian Union. This would last until 1640, and, in the meantime, the Spanish, taking advantage of the Portuguese situation, tried to establish Jesuit missions in the region, in order to strengthen their claims. A few decades after restoring their independence, the Portuguese challenged this Spanish expansion in 1680 by building a fortress right across the estuary from Buenos Aires. This settlement would be known as Colonia do Sacramento, and it is said to be the first permanent settlement in modern-day Uruguay. It would serve as a depot for smuggling with Buenos Aires. The Spanish of Buenos Aires established the colony of Montevideo in 1726 to stop Portuguese expansion in Uruguay. This would resume hostilities in the region. During the Napoleonic Wars, Napoleon invaded the Iberian nations, and, while Spain became a French puppet, the Portuguese monarchy fled to Brazil, establishing their court in Rio de Janeiro. As a result of the Spanish subjugation, many Napoleonic revolutionary ideals spread across into Latin America, and the Spanish Empire began to crack as multiple independence movements rose up against the Spanish monarchy. Among these states to break away was the United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata, which englobed most of modern-day Argentina, but more importantly for our story, Uruguay. The growth of this newly found state worried the Portuguese monarch in Brazil, who, in 1816, declared the four-year-long conquest of the Banda Oriental, ending in a Portuguese victory and later annexation of Uruguay to the Brazilian kingdom as the Provincia Cisplatina. This status quo wouldn't last for long, however. In 1822, the Kingdom of Brazil would secede from the Portuguese Empire, and the subsequent turmoil gave the opportunity for Uruguay to rise up in rebellion in 1825. Brazil would fight tooth and nail to keep its integrity, however, a combination of internal revolts and the fact that Argentina backed Uruguay led to Uruguayan victory, joining Argentina as a federal state. After a brief war between Argentina and Brazil, in 1828 both countries agreed to leave Uruguay as an independent buffer state with the urging of a British mediator. Despite this, Brazil still kept the dream of a Brazilian Uruguay close to its heart. The long-term consequences were significant, since, even though the original discovery in 1511-12 and the first permanent settlement in 1680 were both Portuguese, Uruguay was from now on largely populated by Spaniards, and, instead of the Brazilian Cisplatine province, the region eventually became known as the Spanish-speaking state of Uruguay. As a side note, the new country, trying to unify their people and form a national identity, imposed the education of Spanish on the Portuguese-speaking minority who lived in the north of Uruguay along the border with Brazil. The Portuguese speakers did not entirely abandon their language, however, and instead merged their own language with Spanish, forming a new hybrid language, formerly known as Uruguayan Portuguese, but most commonly known as Portugal, Portuguese plus Espanol. It's almost as if these Uruguayans were able to be either Spanish or Portuguese at the same time. Amazing, isn't it? If you're watching this video, you can too, or rather, appear to be on the internet. How? 
with the sponsor of today's video, Atlas VPN. You might be wondering, why should I use a VPN? I don't live in a dictatorship with my government tracking my every internet movement. Well, unfortunately, this isn't true. And it's not just governments that make use of your data. Firstly, and most importantly, your ISP track and know exactly what you search, and they can and do sell this data to advertisers. Not only this, but Atlas actively monitors links you use to ensure that they are safe, notifying you if that link is malicious, as well as notifying you if someone is trying to steal your data. But it's not all about being safe either. Did you know that some companies offer different experiences to people based on their location? For example, if you use any streaming platform, you might have realised that certain shows are not available in your country. Maybe you want to go on a holiday to Uruguay or Brazil, and a hotel booking company bumps up their listed price. Well, a VPN can help with all of this. By masking your location to websites, and pretending to be from another, you can effectively gain access to region-locked content, and trick booking sites into offering you lower prices. With all of this in mind, you're probably thinking, I know about VPNs, so why should I use Atlas? Well, Atlas has over 6 million active users, showing their trust with their wallets. And speaking of wallets, Atlas won't make a big hole in yours, with its new Christmas deal. Have a private Christmas and a safe new year with Atlas VPN Premium. By signing up for 3 years, you can have it for just $1.70 a month and 6 months for free with a 30 day money back guarantee. Click the link in the video description below and grab this Christmas deal right now. So, get your paella pan and ask Alexa to play some Fado music. According to your internet provider, you're now an Iberian. Now that this brief explanation of the conflict-filled history of Uruguay is done, we can finally explain why was the region so important. The answer lies in its geography. Firstly, we need to understand how the Portuguese perceived Brazil. The Portuguese empire was mostly a maritime empire, which controlled the seas and coastal areas of its vast trade network. As such, the interior of the continents and other land masses that they controlled were vastly unknown. This was combined with the medieval Irish myth of the High Brazil, described by Saint Brendan, an Irish monk, who wrote about a supposed island of fortune in the Atlantic in his Navigatio Sancti Brendani. Influenced by these ideas, as well as many contemporary chronicles, mapmakers of the time saw and drew the Brazilian landmass perforated by two rivers, the Amazonas in the north and the Rio de la Plata in the south which shared the same source, a lake in the middle of Brazil, forming a single drainage basin. This depiction created the myth of the island of Brazil, which hypothetically provided the Portuguese colony with a great natural territorial defence. Over time, as more and more expeditions took place, and consequently the interior of Brazil was colonised, this myth was proven wrong. However, one thing remained a fact. The Rio de la Plata was a strong border. Now, in the late 1700s, this region, that is now Uruguay, was much more than just a continuation of the myth. It was now an important defensive region against the Spanish colonies across the other side of the river. As for Spain, it wished to prevent the growth of Brazil, as having a Portuguese colony so close to Buenos Aires was quite alarming. As such, the Spanish crown tried to limit Portuguese expansion in the region, as it wished to either control it or keep it as a buffer region. Orders were given to release numerous cattle in the region, in order to kickstart the Spanish colonisation effort, and, at around the same time, many Spanish Jesuit and Franciscan missionaries entered the region with the pretext of converting local tribes. This, however, wasn't enough to prevent the Portuguese, who were slowly settling more and more land, closer to the estuary shores. Finally, it is in the post-colonial states of South America that a conclusion was reached. When Argentina declared its independence, the Spanish settlers of Uruguay followed through with them. The wishes of the former colonisers passed, however, to their colonies, and as such, Uruguay kept being a highly disputed region. Although not part of the plan, after a couple of wars between Brazil and Argentina, Uruguay was awarded with its independence. Nonetheless, its economy has remained strongly linked with Brazil. His Majesty, the Emperor of Brazil, declares the province of Montevideo, today called Cisplatina, separated from the territory of the Empire of Brazil, so that it can constitute itself in a free state and independent of all and any nation, under the form of government that it deems most suited to its interests, needs, and resources. The government of the Republic of the United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata agrees to declare, for its part, the independence of the province of Montevideo, today called Cisplatina, and that it constitutes a free and independent state in the terms declared in the preceding article. Articles 1 and 2 of the Preliminary 
Peace Convention. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for other interesting and often forgotten areas of history. Feel free to join our Discord, and if you're feeling extra generous, we have a Patreon, both linked in the description below.